it will actually make me cry right now because I just cannot believe that the world is letting this happen to young people who have everything in front of them right now and they won't won't have it because now they're gonna be turned you turned onto oh my god now I'm carved up I, I can't have babies I can't have sex and I'm just like oh my god Please wake up out there, please. You have to hear what we're saying. We will be so screwed up. Our whole space, the trans world will be screwed up from this. It's, it's going to be us. a wrap on the it, trans It is, it's, it's going to, be to. A wrap. that's right. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is the longest time coming. <laughs> <laughs> people are in shock. <laughs> yeah, people, people are pooping themselves. <laughs> People are smashing their computer screens. <laughs> Here it comes. People are jacking <laughs> off. <laughs> Have you seen? Look, there's so many memes with you and I people make. Oh, totally. Like about the trans thing. So yeah. this is Buck Angel. I feel like I'm just <laughs> gonna introduce you're Buck Angel. Sometimes. You are <laughs> <laughs> You are an icon. Well, so are you. So thank you. Thank you. Meeting of the icons. That's um, right. And you are Probably the most famous trans man in the world. I mean, let's be honest. There's more mainstream. There's mainstream trans. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm the oldest trans man in the world, really. <laughs> Does that make me the most well-known? Well, only because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. So and I don't know what that really means. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you have paved the way for the community and for the current, mm, thank you. you know, conversation about trans people to exist. And yeah. I think we kind of both agreed the conversation has become so skewed in oh. the recent years. Um, and we see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. Yeah, we do. Yes. Yeah. That's why I'm here, friend. Yeah. Because I always have appreciated your voice and I've always appreciated how really a straightforward of a person you are. Not a trans person, not whatever, just a person who really took the space that you have created for yourself to put honesty into the world. Because what you do is actually create honesty. And I think people are tired of hearing lies on some level from our own community. And so really, I think you stepped up to the plate. And this, and really, that's why I sit here. That's why I sit here with you, because I respect you. I feel like I'm very connected to you, and yes. I'm in alignment with you, which I'm not in alignment with a lot of people in this community anymore. Same. It's, it's, it's sad for me, because I really, I love community and I think community is important but I don't know if we really even have a trans community anymore yeah I go back and forth between considering myself a part of the community because there are times where you know I, I do have other trans friends mm -hmm. and you know when I'm hanging out with them sometimes I'm like oh man this is a community like we're yeah. having fun we're like whatever and then other times you know you go online and the discourse is so just um antithetical towards real life like it, yeah. it yeah like it contradicts so much of what it is to be a real trans person exist in That's the world right. and be trans it's like we're supposed to be so freaked out about bathrooms we're supposed to be so freaked out about um pronouns and all this stuff that doesn't make its way into my daily life at all right but on. yet it's the biggest discourse you know that's right um that's right and one of the things and i, I brought you here because i feel like pronouns and bathrooms are one thing the most pressing issue and first of all, we have something else coming. We're going to film after this. It's going to be possibly even better. Actually, yes, even better. Nah. Um, this, this is the warm up. Um, I feel like if I'm talking to you about something we're filming later, they're going to think it's something very different. It's just so great to be with you. And I know. The most pressing issue I feel is the kid thing. Yep. We're and, definitely in alignment on that. You know, the bathrooms are one thing. The yep. pronouns are one thing. We yep. can talk about whatever. There are kids getting really messed up oh. by the direction this ideology is going, um, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yep. So we are both in agreement, and we can get into the specifics, but we're both sure. in agreement that transitioning is not something for kids. A hundred percent in agreement on that, and and we can see it. You know, there's always exceptions to any rule. I believe that there yes. are some kids that might benefit from this. But on a whole, if we look at it, what's happening today, I disagree with everything that's happening. I disagree with the fast, which I, we have been started calling it fast tracking, yes. of pushing these kids, like, if you're going to die, if you don't transition, that's all complete, total nonsense. And it's actually, on some level, um, well, it's lying, first off, yes. number one. Number two, it's putting parents in a very, very, very vulnerable space. I'm a parent. So, you know, it, I don't think it's fair to parents, not, not, not just the kids, but it's also not fair to the parents. And we're not putting the actual real information out there. So parents don't have anywhere to go. If a doctor's telling you your kid's going to kill themselves, any parent. What are you going to do? I'm going to change my kid. Right. 100% I am. And it's the 
I feel like they present these parents and the kids, you know, on a, on a secondhand level with this false dichotomy of you're yep. either dead or you're trans. So That's right. um, they say things like, would you rather have a dead kid or a trans kid? Mm -hmm. As if those are the only two options. And you have to remember that the kids are hearing that as well. Right. And the kids are hearing, oh my God, if I don't transition, then, you know, my life's basically over. And they're literally creating a self-fulfilling prophecy of these kids taking their lives. That's right. And... There's so much damage to be done to these kids through the medications. We talked uh, about Lupron. Uh, um, so people don't know this, but Lupron, aka puberty blockers, mm -hmm. or you know, leftists try to sort of like you know make the terms very vague. So they say yeah. affirming care, or <laughs> say trans trans health care. Okay, we're gonna get specific here. Lupron is the drug that is known as puberty blockers. Yeah. They give it to children at 11 or 12 to block yeah. puberty, right. and this is also the drug that's given to pedophiles in prison to sterilize and chemically castrate. That's right. People don't know this. No, they don't know. I have so much. I've been doing a lot of research on Lupron because look, I want kids to be happy. I want kids to move forward in the world. I want, but when you start to do the research on this puberty blocker, holy crap. I can't even believe what, what it is and how if people actually saw the real truth in this actual drug, there's no way anyone would be okay with giving that to their child. The long-term effects. The, do you know that they did studies on this in, in Finland and in Sweden for 20 plus years and they've shut it down. Yeah, in they Europe, have shut it down. In a lot of countries in Europe, they're actually rescinding That's the right. guidelines that children need to be given puberty blockers because it's having negative ramifications. And, That's right. And these kids are very much guinea pigs in the sense that you know, we don't know what's going to happen to kids who right. do not go through a natural puberty transition. Mm -hmm. okay. But then again, like you said earlier, two things can be true at once. I do know people that have mm -hmm. transitioned at a very young age, 12 mm -hmm. or 13, and they're adults now and they're happy because it it is a rolling of the dice every time. That's right. Um, and there's just so much, I don't even know where to start. The definition <laughs> of trans has been expanded so much yep. that more and more people are obviously being are thinking that they meet the definition, mm -hmm. going seeking the care. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's gonna be the explosion of trans That's people. Right. And then you have the fact that traditionally, not traditionally, but historically, it's mm -hmm. been, uh, um, gender dysphoria is something that afflicted really young boys. Mm -hmm. It's flipped now. I know, it's weird. Yeah. It's actually weird. So where did that come from all of a sudden? Where, where all of a sudden are these young girls realizing TikTok? Just look at TikTok. Look at, that's how we are actually losing ground. It's TikTok. The fact that all these kids It sounds are on, so petty, but it's real. Oh no, it's not petty. Go on there. Anyone who d disbelieves or want, just go on there and search any of these situations. You see young kids running around. I've seen 13, 14 year old kids with chest surgery going, woohoo, we have our, we're so happy. Like what? Who does that? That This has always been a private space. I, I think for yourself as well. Transitioning is a very private space. And to be jumping around about your surgeries or these things seems very indoctrinating to me. Yes. It's like, look what I got. Yay, yay, yay. You want to have it too. That That is actually, you can just see it on TikTok. That's all I'm going to say. Just watch it. Well, because a lot of these surgeons are branding themselves. They're becoming little influencers on TikTok and on yep. Instagram, other platforms, but mostly TikTok. And they're becoming like trans kid surgeon influencers. Oh my God. I can't take, how is that even ethical? It, it, it's very unethical because even if we were to set aside all the negative ramifications of transitioning so young, even mm -hmm. if it were a thing that was okay, mm -hmm. you're clearly branding the surgery mm -hmm. and you're branding it to kids. That's right. So it just becomes such a, a conflict. It's, it's not ethical. It's not. And for me, the conversation, and this is why I get frustrated with people on the right because, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be real, the people that push back on this are people on the right and they're doing it rightfully so. That's right. But they don't do it in the right way. They don't talk about sterilization. Mm -hmm. To me, the conversation mm -hmm. ends at, do you believe children mm -hmm. can consent to mm -hmm. sterilizing themselves by 12 or 13? That's Do you right. believe a child can decide they don't want to have kids for the rest of their life? That's and right. everything else I feel like is just an added argument. That that can be it right there, but no one talks about that. Well, that's because the right or her, whatever you want to call them, the people who are really pushing against us and us too yeah. are using all of those things to push against and not understanding. There's no nuance, right? That That's the key word in a lot of what's happening today. There is no discussion. There is no, there's a middle ground to a lot of this. There are kids who have dysphoria. I don't like to call them trans kids. I call them kids with dysphoria. Because there are people with dysphoria that are not trans. There you go. And so once you start labeling something, you now immediately pushed it into a space and then why do we have a huge amount of detransitioned children 20 year old to me is a child which is not yes especially like 
Tell them how old you are because, like, you don't, yeah. you don't look it. You don't so look for it. all you out there, Trampa is 59. I'll be 60 in June. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have such a young I know. I feel, I feel bad. I feel like an old, creepy old man sitting no. next to you. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm 60. I feel like I've lived such a long No, you have. I'm like, I'm like have. oh, my God, I feel old. But um, You're an old soul. That's why you're oh, so bit, awesome. Yeah. No, no, it's you're an old soul. It's why you're so focused, so smart. Thank so you. you are really. I'm not just saying that because I'm here sitting next to you. And really, I do. I appreciate you, and I think you are so powerful. Mm-hmm. And you use your platform in a way that will actually do such great things for us mm-hmm. as trans people. People see you and hear you. I see what they say to you. And I thank you, Blair, for being honest. You know, that's all the world wants from us. They only want us to be honest about who we are. And when you start lying about who you are, people are going to push back on us. We're lying. We are actually lying about who we are. Yeah. And, you know, it's been very... We'll get back on topic, but I'm, I, it's been very frustrating for years. Because I've, yeah. been, I've been talking about this stuff for years. I know you Like, if you, just, if you just look up um, kids transitioning or whatever on my <laughs> channel, there's videos that are like four or five years old. I know. Since the start, I've been talking about this. And it's always been so frustrating feeling mm-hmm. like I was the only one and it has mm-hmm. meant so much to me that you've jumped in this fight uh-huh. and and it also I feel like we are so much more powerful together yes. twice as powerful together yes. um, and it's also important that we're they're getting this from the trans man perspective yes. and the trans woman perspective because we're not talking about things that we don't know about that's we've, right we've transitioned we've taken the medications we've had the surgeries mm-hmm. we've done the thing mm-hmm. we know what we're talking about mm-hmm. so I think it just means so much that that you well, know. you gave me the space, and when you gave me the space, I'm like, how could I say no to this? Because I care like you do. You care. You're not doing this to just be Blair. You're doing this because you care, and that's why I said, like, I can feel it from your heart. I don't think you're just being an influencer and trying to make a billion dollars off of that. You actually care about what's going on, and so do I. It took me a while to understand, you know, because of the space I come from, right? I come from the adult entertainment space. Yeah. I come from a space that a lot of people push against me and find it to be disgusting, and that's over here. That has nothing to do with yeah. me and you sitting here that's, and that's my other happening. business that and exactly you know i wouldn't be here if i cared what people thought about me but that being said i realized that my my voice can be powerful in a more political space and this is i i consider this a political space yes and i really feel like i wouldn't be doing a disservice not only to myself and my own transition of 30 years i've transitioned 30 years ago and i would be doing a disservice to the young kids today who yes. need to see this is what it's all about. Like, look at me. I have an amazing life because I transitioned, but I didn't do it in a rush. It's it's so scary to see what I perceive to be a lot of youth that are not trans. Mm-hmm. That's right. Getting caught up in the trans space. I see it every day. Do you know kids write me every day? And I, when I say kids, I say 20, you know, because that's a child to me. Yeah. Who say, oh my God, Buck, I think I made the wrong choice and I, I think I need to get out. I'm like, get out of it. Mm. Go and de-trans right now. You're only four like months on second. hormones. Do it. This Stop. Second. I, I encourage all of them who say that to me because I believe that there really are. And I don't want them to get two years into hormones. And yeah. this, look at me. Look at me. It does real <laughs> things. It does real things to I your body. I cannot de- transition and yeah. go back to looking like yeah. a woman I'll be the ugliest woman I'll be working in the circus as the bearded lady it's, it's real like <laughs> let's just be real here it ain't gonna happen yeah and and you know let's also talk about detransitioners we're not a thing that's right. even like six years ago when I transitioned not like, a thing not a thing nope. um and if they were a thing, it was like one person over here, one person over yep, here. Yep. And the way I kind of even looked at them was like, oh, that's tragic, but that's super rare. I'm not mm-hmm. even going to think about it too mm-hmm. much. And now you have just thousands, tens of thousands of kids oh. online. And it's like, okay, so clearly there's a problem here. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that I think the trans community suffers from is for all the talk about how conservatives and right-wing people live in the past, I think to a large extent leftists and trans people live in the past as well. Oh yeah. Because they're still going by these old statistics about how zero point one percent of trans people detransition. Okay, <laughs> let's catch up to twenty twenty two, where there's Reddit groups of twenty thousand plus. Or right? no, twenty eight thousand now. Right. Let's 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 catch up to twenty twenty two, where um, the safeguards to transition. We mm-hmm. talked about this yesterday. That's right. We talked so much off camera. <laughs> Um, um, when you transitioned, which was how many years ago? 30 years ago, this month. 30 years ago. Yeah. And you told me about so many safeguards that there were mm-hmm. to ensure that this was not going to be something that you regret. That's right. And go figure, there were not a lot of G- G- transitioners back That's then. Right. For me, flash forward to 2015 when I transitioned. Wow. wow. A whole years ago going by. Wow. Um, there was zero safeguards. That's right. I walked in 
to a doctor's office and 20 minutes later walked out with a prescription for estrogen and testosterone blockers. Wait, where was your mental health care? They didn't require it. What? Um, No. Same with my surgeries. Same with your surgeries. Well, I had to go through such, like, you know, which they call gatekeeping, and I changed it to safekeeping. I really feel like it's safekeeping. Yes, yes, It is not gatekeeping because I want you to go through this. I want you to transition if that's your space. What I don't want you to do is get into a space where you're like, oh, my God, I just made a huge mistake. I cut my breasts off. I got a hysterectomy. I'm 20 years old. My sex drive is null and void. Like, now how are you going to have a great life? So this is what I think we're not talking about. There is no rush. There actually is no rush. I didn't transition until my late 20s, right? Or 30, I think yeah, it was. I was 20. Like, it's ridiculous that people are in such a rush to transition. This is a life-changing space we're talking about. We're not talking about putting on a jacket and a hat. And, and so much of it is permanent. People don't permanent. get it. Like, I cannot have biological children of my own. That's I do right. not have that DNA anymore. Nope. So these kids <laughs> transition at Mm-mm. 12 and 13. Mm-mm. Which, first of all, we were talking about this also off Mm -hmm. camera, which is like so many trans adults who then go to get the surgery, Mm -hmm. to go to get a vagina, they don't have the adequate starting point, let's just say, to create that vagina because they never actually developed their starting point because they've been on puberty blockers since 12. That's right. So even their own arguments don't even work. If the argument is these kids need to be on puberty blockers because it saves them problems later... (laughs) It seems to me you're trading off problems. (laughs) But what are the problems? So the problems are what what they're trying to save these kids from is looking masculine or looking feminine. Which, why are looks being prioritized? First off, look at us. Look at us. We didn't have puberty blockers. No. And I think you look pretty feminine. (laughs) (laughs) And I think I look pretty masculine. So we're proof of the fact that we didn't take puberty blockers. We might have struggled a little bit. I struggled. No, but I don't. Here's what I don't understand. Struggle is not a bad thing. Now, I don't want some kid feeling suicidal and hating himself for the rest of his life. That's different. But a little struggle with maybe having to wear a binder or having to figure out, is this the right space? Well, back in the day when I had to do it, I had to live male. Right, so I had to live as Buck for a year. Oh, I remember. I've read about that. That's that in the right. past, you had to actually go live as a I gender live before as... you could medically transition to it. That's wow. right. So it's it's basically testing it out. It's a test drive. Do you get in a car and say I'm buying it? No, you don't. You say I want to test drive this car right now. I want to see how awesome it is. Actually, it's not the car I want. I want to go get a different car. Wow. So that, and I just changed my jacket. Instead of now I cut my breasts off, you're never coming back from that. You're not. You're not. What I struggle with is not understanding how other people don't understand (laughs) how morbid it is. Yeah. How insane it is that we think a 12-year-old... And, and they'll comment saying it's not happening with 12 year olds. Yes, it is. Of it's absolutely happening. Yep. Um, at my plastic surgery clinic, I haven't talked about this on my channel yet, but at mm. my clinic where I got my surgeries, mm. I recently took my friend who is an adult to go get her surgeries. I was there as being support. Mm. And um, the front desk lady came up to me and she recognized me from the Joe Rogan podcast. And she's like, love your podcast. And she was also saying, which is crazy because she knows my views. Why would she say this? But she mm. said um, that due to the recent law in Texas, that she had to make a bunch of phone calls to kids and tell them they couldn't get their surgeries. And I'm like, well, kids meaning what? And she's like, well, I had to call a 14 year old today, but then we had to cancel um, his double mastectomy. And then Sydney Watson, a YouTuber called the same clinic and said, well, what's the youngest age? And she recorded it, it's on camera. Them saying 12 is the earliest age they give double mastectomies to. Which first of all, do you even have breasts? You don't even have breasts. I mean, what are they cutting off? Yeah, what are they cutting off? And how is that affecting this child in the future? Why would you ever want to cut a child's? They're not even done growing. Puberty is actually the most important thing a human being can go through. Human being, I don't care what gender or what sex you are, it doesn't matter. Human beings need puberty. Your your brain grows during puberty. So now we're right. going to dumb everyone down? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> what, what sane... Oh my God, Buck, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here, Buck. It's so insane. What sane human being thinks that a person will be healthy that's right. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically... Mm-hmm. Pausing their development, Mm -hmm. canceling their development, really, by 12. You are trapping a child in a child's mindset. And that's the kind of people we want running around? I don't think so. Well, then I start to get all weird conspiracy, dude, right? And I'm like, uh, is there like a bigger thing going on here? 
There has to be, there has to be. There's a lot of money behind this because there's no way our tiny little, little teeny community can have as much power that it has to change laws to literally get our flag flown at the White House. Yeah, it, <laughs> like, you know, they happening? wouldn't give us this power unless they were using it That's for something right. else. And That's I, can, right. I firmly believe that because mm -hmm. y'all have to remember also that, I mean, and you can attest to this even more so than I can, but I grew up in an era where I grew up getting jumped yeah, because I was, you know, the, the feminine kid, the yeah. um, getting beat up. I had to learn how to fight. By, mm -hmm. by seven years old, I was, I was swinging on <laughs> high school kids. Like, it was crazy. Wow. Um, and and so, I'm, so I grew up in that era. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do we go from that to if you don't support 12-year-olds removing their body parts, you are a bigot. That's right. And it's because I think whatever powers that be and there are smarter people than me that can figure this out mm -hmm. whatever powers that be have recognized that they can give us this power and utilize it for something else whether it's some form of eugenics whether it's yes. some form of you know sterilizing the population i don't know That's people right. don't people don't understand that you're sterilizing kids you're actually sterilizing kids you're doing so many so much damage to a child Insane. that it just seems to me there has to be something more powerful involved here which is what money money is always follow the money it's an actual real thing money makes people do things course, yeah. and lupron which i have doing doing some research on they had an actual major lawsuit like i think it was 10 or 15 years ago where they had to pay 825 million dollars because they were giving Lupron to doctors and and asking them and paying the doctors to promote Lupron when they knew what it was. So was a So and here they are again doing it again. They're paying doctors. Do you know that Jack? Oh yeah. Jack Turban, I think his name is. He's a doc. He's a child doctor in at Stanford, or not even a doctor, but I, I, I forgot exactly what his t title is. But he's also very pro Lupron. And I did the research. He's getting paid by that company. He's it's gotten disgusting. like money from them to like promote the product. Look at, he's actually a dangerous person. He's the guy who's really promoting puberty blockers for kids. Well then also look at the fact that just trans surgeries in general is becoming a billion dollar industry. That's right. It's growing exponentially, mm -hmm. it's exploding. Mm -hmm. And then, so what do you do? You expand, expand your clientele. It's not just adults anymore, now it's kids. <laughs> And it's more kids than ever, and I'm sorry, there's no logical explanation None. for why gender dysphoria, which is something that was historically seen in young yep. boys, has flipped, and you're seeing it in friend groups. That's right. You're seeing it in parents and children, which also makes me like... It's disgusting. That, that to me... Yep. I just did a video where I covered like a YouTube vlog channel where the dad came out as trans, and a few months later, the oh. kid is now trans, he's seven. Barf. It's... it's not real. That's not real. Of course not. It's not of real. Of course not. But but the but I struggle with like getting so frustrated that people can't mm -hmm. see it. It's like yeah. people lose all their common sense because, <laughs> because the minute you shroud something as yes. being a civil rights issue. That's right. Which in many respects it once was. It once was, but because, it's not anymore. Exactly, because yeah. I'm under no illusion that life has been historically easy for people like us. Of course I'm not. I'm under no illusion that the right wing is our friend. I'm under no illusion yep. there are not genuine struggles for trans people. That's right. But we're setting that aside to talk about a more pressing issue, which is these kids. That's right. <laughs> Sterilizing the themselves. Kids. I don't care. What, I don't I'll care be honest with you. I don't. I don't Honestly, care. Blair, I do not. If you make a choice and you make a mistake, oh well, dude, you should have done your research and you should have figured it out. I have no problem with that that's their yeah. situation they gotta figure it out i will not let kids be put into our space and being told that if we don't do this there, people are being lied to parents are being lied to and i'll say it again i'm a yeah. parent if somebody said that to me i would be like if i wasn't trans i'd be like what oh my god i would freak out what do you mean what do i do well here give your kid these medicine and your kid's going to be all fine of course a parent is going to do that they feel very vulnerable at that point and they want to save their child so everyone yeah. out there needs to understand what Blair and I are saying is this. We care about these kids. We don't want the kids to be shoved in a space that they're not supposed to be in. That's why there's a group of 28,000 detransition. These are all young kids. Yeah. I did um, a conference over the weekend where I was mm. debating trans issues on a panel. And the opposition to me um, stated something. Well, you know... It's kind of like back in the day, if, if someone thought they were gay but found out they weren't, you know, mm. there's no harm done because they thought they were gay but they're not. I'm like, how can you compare these you two? You can't. Being gay is one thing. <laughs> 
having irreversible surgeries right. and medic and treatments mm -hmm. is another. That's a whole other so space. The, so he's right. The worst thing that happens if you think you're gay and you're not is, oh, you thought you were gay for a year. The worst thing that happens if you think you're trans for even six months That's is right. you might have completely irreversible bodily That's damage. right. And like you likely will. There's no comparison at no, all. It's a different thing. Totally different. That sexuality and gender are two different spaces. And our fight is different than the gay fight. Yeah. It is completely different. And you're right. So once a kid gets surgery and does all that, how are they going to come out of that? You don't you think can't. they're going to be depressed for the rest of their life? I deal with these kids. They cry to me all the time. I spend hours, you know, on the phone with these kids because I feel on some level that it's my service to do that with these kids and they don't wow. have anybody else to talk to. And I leave crying and like, how is this, you know, wow. it actually make me cry right now because I just cannot believe that the world is letting this happen to young people who have everything in front of them right now and they won't won't have it because now they're going to be turned you turned onto oh my god now I'm carved up I, I can't have babies I can't have sex and I'm just like oh my god please wake up out there please you have to hear what we're saying we will be so screwed up our whole space the trans world will be screwed up from this it's, it's going to be us. a wrap on the it, trans it is it's, it's about going to be a wrap to. that's right it's and that's what's so harmful because i i think back to when i first realized that i was trans right mm -hmm. I, I realized that I have to do something because this gender dysphoria has followed me my entire mm -hmm. life. It wasn't going away. I tried to ignore it. I tried to yeah. put it into other things. I tried to compartmentalize it. It went nowhere. And, and, and the day that I realized, you know, I guess that means I have to transition. Yeah. Um, it meant so much to me that I was able to have resources to do that. It meant so much to me that there was a path and that people like you set that path and I can, you know, a roadmap vaguely that I mm -hmm. could go down. Um, and so this is all very real, the trans thing to us. Gender dysphoria, oh. you know, transitioning, being trans, it's a very real thing. Right. And it's not this political football to us like I it know. is to everyone else. To all these other people, it's this issue that you can talk about um, being right or wrong or fundraising for or whatever. For us, this is our lives. Right. And we're seeing our community being... The, the, People pretend as if we're fighting against trans people. I know, it's we're so fighting funny. against the community <laughs> when we're sitting here screaming and begging for these people that are coming into the community to not fucking discredit. That's right. Because it's it's real. And this is also where like, you know, a lot of far right people don't like me because they think mm -hmm. the entire concept of being trans is something that that That's is right. is illegitimate or constructive. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Gender dysphoria is long studied, long documented, mm -hmm. and we can talk about what the best measures for that are. Mm -hmm. But that conversation now has to come after the kids stuff. That's right. And the politicization of it. That's right. We can't even get to like what we can theoretically do about gender dysphoria in the future, yeah. possibly finding a cure. Possibly. No one even talks about that. No, nope, they don't. You know, they everyone do talks about how transition is so faulty, which I agree that it is. It's not a hundred percent thing. It's it's different That's for everyone, right. different results for everyone. Maybe someday there could be a cure to where you could take a medication and never have to have the need to transition. That's right. You know? Yeah. Um, and then people say, Oh, that means you're erasing trans people. Well, actually that means you're erasing gender dysphoria, which no, is No, it means you want to actually I want to take I, I don't want to be this. No. I, I don't want to be trans. I'll tell you right now, I didn't want to be a transsexual man. I want to be a man. I want to be born I would have given everything to be born a man. This is not some this is just a fix for the problem that I have, my disorder. I don't care anybody out there doesn't want to think of it as a mental disorder. I do. It's my disorder, what I feel, what how I needed to fix it, but I wish to God I was born a guy. So today what we have is trans identity. And that's the it's difference different. with me and possibly you. Mm -hmm. I don't identify as a trans person. That was never on the table for yeah, me. Yeah, I just like am. I it's, just not, am. it's not it's not a yeah. I, I don't put it on my business call no. or something. <laughs> it's literally just that's like right. this is something that I do believe I was either born with or developed extremely early, yep. previous, like prior to the point where I can remember anything, mm -hmm. at the very least, followed me throughout my life, mm -hmm. and I sought to fix it the way I figured out how to do. That's right. But it's 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 become this other thing now, and it's just there's going to be such a large pendulum effect. Oh. It's going to come down on people like you and I, and then oh. they're going to be looking at us like, where were you that's when, right. when the 12 year olds were getting their breasts cut off? And it's like, well, actually, I was right here talking about actually, it. Actually, that's what I say all the time. You know how people always say, well, where was everybody when these little kids were getting Right? Nobody right. was speaking up. Actually, we are speaking up. Right. And I say it all the time. I'm going to be on the right side when this actually explodes. And I'm going to be on the side that said, well, Buck and Blair were speaking up about this. But no one seems to. But they're listening, Blair. They are. I, I really do see yeah. people coming around now and understanding. When you start putting children in a space of medical, these kids will be medicalized for the rest of their lives. 
that's so important to state <laughs> because what people don't understand is like everyone that's not trans has no idea what transitioning really is right. or what hormones really are, what they really do, what they don't do. We are on hormones forever. Forever. We're not on hormones for the year of our transition <laughs> story. Like I feel like, cause I, I, did, I did a video where I um, chronicled my surgeries and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think people think like, like that, like period was like my transition period and now I'm good. That's right. No, um, you're on medication forever. Mm -hmm. So again, what sane person thinks a 12 year old can decide to be on medication forever? I don't know. They're, they're not sane. That's well, the problem. Yeah. Who's ever running this show, they're complete wing nut crazy people who want to, so here's the deal, I want to coexist in the world. I want to be part of the world. Yeah. I transition to be a man and live in the world. These people want to dominate space. They want to take over women's space. They want to come in and say people with uteruses, people with whatever, that's not fair and that's not okay yeah. because people don't have uteruses. Women have uteruses. Trans men can have a uterus. But when we start wiping out language in order for trans people to feel comfortable in the world that is insane and i will not yeah. be part of that it, it used to be it would kind of be like me like moving to china <laughs> and then being like <laughs> actually y'all have to do things like america <laughs> it's like totally. no trans people and and, and 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 i don't understand why the virtue of like being humble is right. so gone now that's right but like trans people <laughs> i feel like do need to be humble enough in the sense of like we are something that is rare yeah. we are something that's unique we have to learn how to mm -hmm. coexist in the world not dominate the world and change it to our whims that's because right. it doesn't even make sense no and and, and it's and it's going down it, that's right and when you're honest oh my god people love you because you're honest people love me because i'm honest most of the people that come to me watch me are all cisgender which i actually even hate that word and i don't use it but that being said the people who come to me are not trans and not LGBT. They're yeah. like, oh, Buck, you're just a normal dude. That's all I want the world to see, that people like us just want to get back into the world, deal with our stuff, and move forward and become doctors, lawyers, YouTubers, whatever the heck we want to be. Don't become a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be a YouTuber, but trust me. Um, uh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this has been amazing, Buck. We're going to do film another thing that's really special right here after this but right um right on yeah you know this conversation needs to be happening thank that's you so right much for I, coming on. I appreciate you a lot thank Thanks you for putting us out there guys make sure you subscribe to this channel as well as my second channel follow me on twitter and instagram follow buck on all his social media it'll be on the screen here and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys